am i audible okay yes yes uh, so first thing first i welcome you all to a webinar on application of stem cell therapy so let's welcome together dr pooja pm she will be your subject guide for the webinar and for the upcoming course of the stem cell so allow me to share one brochure with you all for your reference So I hope this uh, brochure is visible to all of you. So this is our eight-week certificate course in basics of stem cell therapy and its application. And here we are coming uh, from introduction to stem cell and development to bioethics of stem cell research and therapy. The same will be shared with you all after the class on your respective email IDs. So let me allow to welcome uh, Dr. Pooja Bia. Ma'am, uh, are you here? Yes. Uh, over to you, ma'am. I hope you can access your option to save screen. Uh, yeah, I will. Yeah. Oh, my, I hope my screen is visible for everyone. Yes. Okay, well, uh, I welcome you all for the session on the stem cells and their applications. So in this webinar, uh, what you're gonna see is you're gonna see the highlights of whatever the session is coming up, okay? The course highlights. So it's not a basically a complete course. It's a webinar on the highlights, what I'm going to do in the complete course, okay? So stem cells, so you might know, you might have heard of, uh, lot of research happening in stem cells or uh, stem cells uh, being a future of medicines so there are lot and lot and lot of research is happening in stem cells so let's see what the stem cells are and its applications okay in real time so stem cells so stem like i said stem cells it is undifferentiated cells that are capable of self renewable and differentiation into specialized cells, okay? So there are types of stem cells like embryonic stem cells, adult stem cells, mesenchymal stem cells, and induced pluripotent stem cells. There are various other kinds of stem cells as well, but mainly you, like, you know, for the study purpose, uh, or mainly they are differentiated into the two forms, that is embryonic as well as the adult stem cells, all mesenchymal stem cells, all these are the, you know, kind of subgroups, you can say. So, so I want to start my session with this. So, you can see the picture and uh, this, uh, the, the quote written below. So, it all starts with the sperm and egg becoming the first stem cells from which our entire body is created okay so stem cell is like a pioneer okay it is a pioneer for the development of a whole body so you know this process of you know reproduction where egg and form uh, sperm fuses and once the fusion happens there will be the division right it will get divided to two cell staged four cell stage eight cell stage and it forms a morula and blastula i am showing this reproductive phase or the you know process because it will guide you to whatever is happening in the stem cells because i told you stem cell is developed from this process okay so if when you see this uh, blastula here so it is like a, what i can say it is like a, a you know box full of confetti these confettis are the cells okay which has the power to self renewal which has the power to differentiate into different forms of cells so you can see here what happens okay see the egg and uh, egg uh, comes the sperm comes and fuses with the egg so you can see it forms a eight cell stage and the blastula blastocyst is formed so you saw the cyst okay like i told there are a lot of cells inside the blastocysts. So these cells, we remove these cells and we grow in a culture, like, you know, cell culture. We grow this and this, I told, since stem cells 
has a power to differentiate into different kinds of cells. It can be divided into cardiomyocytes or neurons or liver cells. It means it has a power to differentiate into different cells. Okay. Okay. Well, so kinds of stem cells. So stem cells, basically, you can see as a totipotent stem cells where, you know, each cells can develop into a new cells. So next is pluripotent stem cells where cells can form any types of cell cells, uh, you know, cell types. Okay. So totipotent, it will happen, you know, the totipotent cells are usually found in the embryos. Okay. Where, uh, you know, after fertilizations about one to two three days and pluripotent about five to 14 days. So when you see what is the difference between totipotent you know, stem cells and pluripotent stem cells, if you see totipotent have a capacity to give rise to you know, majority of all kinds of cell cells, embryonic as well as extra embryonic, whereas pluripotent is only embryonic stem cells, okay? And multipotent. So here it forms a you know number of, some kind of you know cells for example uh, you know adult stem cells basically so stem cells they are capable you know of all these things because of the main three properties what they exhibit that is they are capable of dividing themselves for long periods so they have a con uh, continuous cell divisions okay the divisions they are unspecialized means they are not specific for like it's not a liver cell it's not a hepatocyte Means it will not do a particular function. It is a stem cell which is not specialized, okay? And they can give rise to specialized. So stem cells are basically unspecialized cells that can give rise to a specialized cells. So you can see this picture here. Stem cells, it has a power to self-renewal and can differentiate into either stem cells or can differentiate into a specialized stem cell. So once this becomes a neuron, it will do its own particular function, right? So this is the general property of the stem cell. You can see this picture. You can see how the percentage of stem cells, it decreases and lose vi vi vitality as we age. Okay, so now how the extraction goes. Like I showed in a previous picture, you can see after cell divides, it goes to, I told you, two cells, stage four, eight, okay? And then you can see uh, in an embryonic stem cells, I am seeing in the embryo, as the embryo goes, they, you know, they start dividing. And after they divide and become blastocysts, what happens, uh, you know, if you have to extract the stem cells from the earth, you have to remove the inner cells and then grow in a dish, okay? So this is, uh, you know, you have to grow in a, using a particular, culture of medium and then it can has a capacity so for skin cell uh, skin cells to develop or differentiate into skin cells there might be a different you know condition or a culture media okay so this is how they are extracted and grown in a lab so in adult stem cells what happens so you can see now stem cell therapy is happening or stem cells uh, you know transplantation so what they do they remove the adult stem cells from the adult body okay or like they might take the hair follicles and then then may grow and then inject back to the cells okay or the skin or the cartilage or uh, you know they might remove the bone bone marrow transplantations so this is all happens in you know adult stem cells so this is a, a main highlight of the stem cells its applications in the field of medicines so one is regenerative medicine so repair and replacement of the damaged tissues or organs cell therapies stem cell transplantations of like you know for various kinds of you know conditions like leukemia lymphoma immune disorders next uh, gene therapies neurological disorders so it can it has a vital functions and uh, it has a you know it is like one of the component in the future of medicine. So here I have uh, listed some of the diseases that are, you know, uh, where the stem cell is used in the treatment. So it can be used in the traumatic brain injury, in stroke, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, sclerosis, deafness, spinal cord injury, 
MI, liver diseases and diabetics in uh, Crohn's diseases, in muscular dystrophy, and it is used in, I told like sclerosis and various kinds of sclerosis. It is used in bone marrow transplant, osteoporosis, or osteoarthritis, rheumatoid arthritis. So uh, they are used, potentially they are used in a lot of conditions, okay? So uh, in this session, I want to show you some of the applications like a case reports, okay? So you will see what is really happening you know what really happening in the real time uh, using a stem cell okay so first one is for non healing diabetic food also okay so you can see here the case presentations what happened is so there was a 58 year old male so he had a 15 year history of diabetic uh, type 2 diabetes okay Yes, you guys have any doubt? Okay, so a uh, 15 years history of type 2 of diabetes presented with non-healing ulcer on left foot, okay? So despite of the regular wound care and offloading, the ulcer was persisted, okay, for about six months, okay? So, and his uh, patient glycemic control was suboptimal with glycolated HbA1c is 9.2. So, usually what uh, treatment is given is usually like, you know, the standard approach what they do, they just remove the debris and they do the dressings, all these, you know, the commonly what is happening. So, what they did uh, in this, you know, the stem cell therapy, what happens? So, after, uh, you know, in stem cell therapy, one major thing is the ethics, okay? Ethics is lot is involved, which I'm going to deal in the coming slides. So, so after obtaining an informed consent, what we do? The bone marrow aspiration procedures, okay? So, from the iliac crest, you can see here, okay? So, they, what happened? They isolate, okay? The stem cells, okay? And then they grow these stem cells, okay? And the you know, patient is injected using the uh, using this mesenchymal stem cells into the ulcer bed. So, what happened? This was a patient. He was presented with the you know diabetic food, non healing diabetic food. So, what happened? They removed his stem cells and they grew his stem cells in a culture media, and then they injected into the ulcer bed. Okay, so this is what you can see the treatment outcomes. What is uh, happening so what happened is this is the observation okay so within one week of the stem cell inject you know, mesenchymal stem cell injection the patient reported with a reduction in the pain and discomfort you can see the improvement in the therapy after the stem cells was injected at two weeks the granulation tissue formation was evident the ulcer size was decreased okay so at six weeks, the ulcer was significantly smaller, measuring to 0.5 centimeter and exhibited epi epithelialization. So at 12 weeks, the wound was completely co closed. The patient was asymptomatic and there was no observation of any adverse event or complication re uh, you know, related to the mesenchymal stealth therapy. So this is what the observation was made after the treatment of mesenchymal stem cells. You can see how gradually the patient is improving after mesenchymal stem therapy. Next, in the remission, okay, in arthritis patients. So a 32-year-old uh, female patient, okay, she is zero positive for RA. She was positive at the age of 23, okay. So they gave all the drugs that are, you know, used in the treatment so it's a uh, as a standard of care whatever they had to give they gave and uh, multiple biological agents was also given for the patients okay still there were no you know resolution or they, the person did not have a person did not heal from the conditions okay and her quality life was significantly deteriorated so what happened so considering all these factors they uh, you know plan to give her 
the stem cell therapy okay so what happened so this was uh, done because it is allogenic allogenic means they have removed somebody else means who are compatible or who are matched okay so her sibling uh, gave the stem cells so siblings uh, stem cells was uh, uh, you know taken and after that what happened she was injected with this hematopoietic stem cells okay so what happened post treatment is so within the first week after the stem cell therapy the patient experienced the periodic severe neutropenia where her you know there was a low number of neutrophils and was and she was closely monitored so after 3 months what happened there was no you know uh, no longer requirement of the biologics okay and her joint inflammation had sub substantially diminished okay so you can see the you know good outcomes after the treatment with the stem cells so after uh, you know during the two years follow up you can see the patient remained complete remissions so there was not active you know conditions of rheumatoid arthritis with no evidence of active ra okay or any further disease progressions okay her inflammatory markers also remained within the normal remits and she reported have a significant improvement and her quality of life also it became good next treatment for the next one Uh, the case report three is treatment for Parkinson's. You can you know a uh, Parkinson's uh, conditions. You know the the patients will have a worsened motor symptoms. They will have a tremors, right? So it is like a neurological conditions. The current treatment for uh Parkinson's were the dopaminergic uh, you know related medications. Okay, so however in the patients these approaches do not did not provide definitive cure and may have limitations. Okay, and so what happened? after the uh, you know we uh, you know uh, took a informed consent and the bone marrow aspirations like you saw in a previous slide they took the you know they took the the bone marrow aspirations was done and they took the mesenchymal stem cells and was isolated expanded in the culture and characterized and shown the potency okay after that they were injected back to the patient okay so here it is not allogenic it was his her, her own stem cells okay within the weeks of the first infusions what happened the patients reported subjective improvement in the motor symptoms and reduction in the tremors okay so if uh, based on the scaling so different diseases have different scaling so the scalings here is updrs okay so that shows a significant improvement in the uh, motor functions and activities of daily livings so after com uh, completions of you know the bone marrow related missing chymal stem cells infusion the patient demonstrated improved you know a gait or reduced rigidity or had a better balance control okay there was reported also he also reported with the decreases in the medication requirement and the notable enhancement of the quality of the life so post one year there was relieved sustained improvements in the motor functions and there was no side effects of the stem cell therapy so now you saw three kinds of diseases here okay but there are a lot of other diseases which can be cured or which can be treated using stem cells okay in this case report you basically saw a three kind of conditions okay so this is a beauty of the stem cells okay so but still there are some current challenges in the stem cells one is i told you the ethical consideration is highly you know is a high is in this you know uh, treatment line okay first is safety concern see you can never say sometimes they see if there is a mutant stem cells they have the capacity to form cancerous cells also so safety concerns standardization standardization see as a drug comes to market there will you know st uh, no drug studies happening there will be standardization uh, all these studies will happen but stem cells there are lo no lot of studies happening so there should be standardization of the stem cell therapy studies cost and accessibility since you know this takes a highly expertized techniques and highly you know expert fellow to do this techniques the cost and accessibility is a issue regulatory framework so the what i have told is a 
ensuring responsible and ethical use so let's just see small ethical part on the stem cells okay since i mentioned uh, embryonic stem cells uh, has a various kinds like totipotent stem cells pluripotent stem cells and has a capacity to divide into various forms of stem cells so what is it okay to destroy a embryo right it's not right because again it is about a scientific approach as well as a human humanity related approach okay so there is no major ethical concerns about the extraction of adult stem cells the only way to uh, you know obtain the most potential useful stem cells are below uh, believed to be from the human embryos okay so if a human embryo is killed in the process so it will be like the beliefs will be different okay sometimes people believe you know the people believe that embryos have a soul and sometimes it is some people it just uh, think it as a you know a part of a science experiments okay so you can see if a person is going to ivf there will be uh, sometimes you know because they don't do just a uh, egg and sperm fusion for one cell they try for two three because the chance of egg and sperm fusion is very low if you go to you know embryos but then what embryos extra what sometimes the other embryo which you just do as a backup can, might also fertilize so this whether can we use this you know embryo for the study so it is again a question of ethics okay because sometimes the embryo killing an embryo is not okay and it is against the ethics so what is the future of uh, stem cells okay so it, it helps as a future of healthcare it is helps in the medicine pharmacy industries it helps in the future of aging it acts as a anti aging there are a lot of research is happening okay uh, related to the stem cells so like i mentioned like i highlighted pre in the previous slide there are a lot of disease that can be you know uh, treated using stem cell therapy you know therapy and uh, there are a lot of research coming up there are uh, related to embryonic as well as stem cell therapy okay so future alternatives so you just saw that uh, you study something like embryonic stem cells and adult uh, stem cells right now okay which we, we take from the body right embryonic uh, is extracted from the body and even the adult stem cells we have to aspirate the bone marrow and then the grow all the stem cells okay mesenchymal stem cells or neurological stem cells all these kind of stem cells we have to take from the body and then grow in the culture media and then induce so there is something called as induced pluripotent stem cells where you induce okay so adult stem cells that have been genetically programmed to an embryonic stem cells like state okay so here what they do is they use some viruses that to introduce reprogramming factors so like a vehicle so these are already useful at all for the you know uh, drug development in modeling of the diseases as a hope uh, anybody here can uh, recognize this great scientist anyone nobody is it okay so this great scientist is shinya emaka so he is a awarded with nobel prize in physiology or medicine for his work that is revolutionized cell biology okay so he won nobel prize in 2012 for what for his contribution in the field of stem cells okay so what sir has done is he has you know his study was to reprogram the mature cell to become pluripotent okay so reprogramming the adult cells to become induced pluripotent stem cells okay so what happened in 2016 emahaka and his team successfully reprogrammed okay so programming is what what usually happens okay so what happened uh, two cell stage it formed four cell stage it formed all the cells okay so once uh, the cell became okay blastula and it had a power to become 
pluripotent right so now pluripotent means what it differentiated so differentiated so if, if i have to write here if i have to explain you so if you take this cell okay so we are growing this cells which is pluripotent so pluripotent means what it has a capacity to give into various kinds of cells right so okay it if it's a neuron if it's a skin cells if it's a hepatocytes okay so various kinds of cells so what did the sir yamaka did in his research is he took this adult cells okay and then he try to reprogram this way usually what happens is this way his program was to his research program was to reprogram the adult stem cells to the induced pluripotent stem cells okay which behave like a embryonic stem cell and could differentiate and this after giving this what happens it can differentiate into various stem cells you can just take a blood cell okay and make it this embryonic stem cells and then ask them to differentiate into various cells okay so sir so had done reprogrammed adult stem cells into fibroblast cells okay so in 20, in 2007 what happened emaka and his team achieved another major breakthrough by successfully reprogramming adult fibroblast cells okay they took a fibroblast cells into induce to report in stem cells okay so this opened up the potential use for lot of regenerative medicines and disease modeling and you have to remember one of the factors that is called as yamaka factors so when a stem cell comes it is comes along with the term called as yamaka factors so these are some kind of genes okay so these are uh, using a viral i told the virus acts like a you know transporter here so what they do they transport all these gene to program to reprogram the adult stem cells to induced pluripotent stem cells which has a capacity to divide into the cells what the kind of cells what we need in for the particular kind of diseases okay okay so this is about the stem cells so if i have to summarize so stem cells like i told it can be differentiated it has the power to self renew and it can be differentiated into various types so it has a various applications so i have highlighted in this webinar the three kinds of you know uh three major conditions uh, one autoimmune conditions and one uh, metabolic condition and uh, and one parkinson the neurological conditions so you you saw how you know effective the stem cell therapy was in all this treatment so this is about stem cells so in the coming classes you will see how the it really works okay we'll see various pathways or uh, we will see the applications we will see the reasons or uh, you know what are the studies happening so all this you're going to study in the courses that are coming up so if you guys have any kind of questions or queries uh, you know you can just put it in the chat box so that i can you know clarify as much as possible yes uh, so see the cost effectiveness again see it comes to the particular you know kind of uh, you know conditions okay some conditions uh, it is you know the cost may not be that expensive but sometimes some conditions of course it is see because stem cells is not like a drug you know or uh, you know some kind of you know you know treatment where you just give so it requires a surgical process where you have to aspirate uh, stem cells and then uh, you know it should be maintained in a proper laboratorial conditions so cost in the terms of all this is will be little more expensive than the common drug that is used in the treatment okay and you can see the drug it, uh, the line of drugs will be same for every person like you know if you are using this chemotherapy for a you know 
okay for this breast cancer or leukemia okay this chemotherapy is given so it can it is given this is what is happening practicing in the real time in the medicine right this particular chemotherapy is using for this leukemia but in stem cell therapy it, this is not happening you personalize the medicine right you remove a person's stem cells you grow in a particular culture media because it takes a lot of labor you no know, you know professional labors okay where they you know experts to do all these steps so the cost will be much you know little more expensive compared to the normal okay uh project work uh, like uh, in the courses is it yes stem cell therapy is uh, uh, fda approved but however uh, you know in the uh, government like even the uh, uk or usa they have stopped working on uh, uh, you know embryonic stem cells since you know the ethics I, like i mentioned because uh, it is like a killing an embryo but there are a lot of research happening in korea in singapore all these countries there are a lot of research happening in this field okay so is some we can make a vision okay so there are a lot of uh, you know uh, research happening in the treatment of uh, cataract using a stem cell therapy but uh, you know there are not still uh, you know what i can say it is not still uh, has not come to the market i can say that because they are not using regularly in the clinical practices yes uh, there are many promising researchers using uh, stem cells to generate you know all this uh, photoreceptor cells like including dots and cones okay so there are uh, many i told you see this stem cells see you can see the uh, pluripotent induced pluripotent stem cells that did not happen long ago it just happened in 20 to 12 right so there are a lot of researches are coming up uh, related to this field so it is like a future of a uh, science okay there are a lot of studies happening okay in okay can you briefly explain how stem uh, stem cell therapy is useful in uh, liver failure and uh, chronic re uh, renal uh, diseases well uh, so exactly if you see uh, in liver failure and in uh, you know if you say uh, you know ckd or chronic kidney diseases so what happens either you know sometimes c uh, ckd can be caused due to lupus nephritis okay or it can be uh, caused due to the diabetes or uh, like you know uh, diabetic uh, that is diabetic kidney diseases dkts right so all this can be prevented so when it comes to the first stage we can give a treatment to the diabetes okay like you can give the mesenchymal stent therapy so that it will not be progressed okay that also can be done or else sometimes a renal stem cell therapies also can be done but as of now they are not doing this any kind of approaches here it is still in this you know research stage so since i work in a liver and uh, you know kidney i work in this sectors so we currently don't use any kind of you know uh, stem cells you know therapy but there are some kind of you know uh you can say uh, uh like gcsf all these kinds of other biologicals we is used in combined with the stem cells for the treatment of liver
A very good example is GCSF, okay? GCSF in liver cells. So GCSF is used that uh, we see in a, you know real time in a liver clinics, they use GCSF in the treatment of uh, liver conditions. Yes, uh, there are several stem cell banks in India that, uh, you know, uh, there are several banks that, uh, like, you know, stem cell bank is like, uh, not exactly stem cell bank, there will be like a cord banks, okay, where they uh, remove this umbilical cords, there will be cord blood, you can see, uh, there was a news of Aishwari Rai, what happened, she uh, kept all, you know, when uh, her daughter was born, she kept the, her cord all this okay because what happens is cord cells uh, cords you know right umbilical cord so they uh, also have believe that there will uh, be stem cells in them okay so uh, you know few they can extract the stem cells from this cord uh, cord and then can be developed so there will be cord blank there will be stem cell of course there in india there are stem cell banks okay Stem cell therapy is a permanent cure. Uh, permanent cure, I can't, you know, uh, highly uh, say that. But there is, uh, see, you can see, I just gave an example of three conditions and there were no remission of the disease. Like, because there is not, no active, uh, you know, disease progression happening, which is like a kind of a permanent cure, right? Okay, what happens if a body rejects stem, uh, stem cell transplant? Okay, uh, like any kind of transplant, uh, this is uh, one of the greatest, uh, you know, uh, what we can say, it is a drawback, okay? So the body has, a, you know, can reject, okay? Like any kind of, you know, organ rejection, the, like the graft rejections, body can reject the stem cell uh, treatment. So, you know, that is why we, you know, see that uh, though, the, if the donor like you know allergenic we see the siblings you know can give the you know stem cells so this is why they see all this donors how it is matched so what happens exactly after that is that there will be a lot of immune reactions happening in the you know body which can deteriorate your you know conditions what it which primarily was present Yes, any other questions? Uh, in the coming, you know, the courses, uh, I want to show about how the Emaka project came into fact, how the working happened. See, Emaka project is like, a, you know, uh, it is like a game changer in the treatment. Okay. Can you just imagine a cell? 
you know uh, cells that you know like adult cell cells okay adult some cells can go back to the pluripotent stem you know adult cells any you know mature cells that is going back to the pluripotent stem cells means what it has a capacity to develop into any kinds of senses which is a game changer which can used to treat you know various kinds of cells uh so if you ask any food that helps to grow stem cells see uh usually it is all about your genetics okay whatever is happening because it starts i told you it starts when the sperm and the egg fuses so however the balanced diet okay the food rich with minerals antioxidants you know it is very good because i told you i put a slide where it shows that aging you know it decreases the count as well as viability of the stem cells right so you have to to reduce the aging it means what you have to you know have a food that is good with antioxidants or it which has a less inflammatory you know factors like you know fried foods all these are not good for the body so it means it will carry a lot of inflammatory comp you know which has you know having food which has a lot of anti inflammatory properties is good for the cell functions okay any other questions i hope you'll join to uh, you know to the courses so that we can you know study the session you know study a lot about the stem cell treatment its applications you know more elaborately we can see how what is you know really happening in a real time uh, we can discuss a lot more studies a lot more uh, medical conditions okay we can also see its applications in the various industries in pharma industries in regenerative medicines in toxicity studies how it is useful and so this is what we are going to deal with the you know coming courses hope uh, the session was useful for you all so if there is no more question i think we can wind up Sudesh. Ah uh, yes, ma'am. I think we can wind up. Okay. Uh, thank thank you, you so much, ma'am, for the session. Thank you, everyone, for your time and patience.